Hi, I'm Donald Ray, a lecturer in electrical engineering at Heriot Watt University in Edinburgh, UK. And I'm Kate Lowden, an undergraduate student. We're going to demonstrate one of the example programmes that comes with the ARM University programme DSP Education Kit and is also featured in this textbook. These complementary materials enable DSP theory taught in lectures to be reinforced by hands-on lab experiments using inexpensive and portable kit. A cool feature of DSP hands-on learning is that it involves actual analogue audio signals that are processed in real time on microcontroller hardware. Analogue audio signals are readily sourced, for example, from smartphones, and we can listen to them using headphones or loudspeakers. Let's look at the hardware involved. In addition to a laptop, we have an inexpensive microcontroller development system. This is the $49 Cypress FM4 Pioneer kit, but there are alternatives. For example, these two development kits from ST Microelectronics. What all of these have in common is an ARM Cortex M4 core. What's cool about ARM Cortex M4 is that it's a DSP enhanced processor capable of real time digital signal processing, for example, filtering and FFT of audio signals. Cypress FM4 has a 200 megahertz CPU clock and on the same circuit board is a Wolfston audio codec. This codec was used in the original iPod. These microcontroller development kits are inexpensive enough that students might even purchase their own. They are useful for more general microcontroller courses and not just for DSP. We can do a number of different experiments using this equipment alone. For example, we can delay signals, delay, 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 delay. generate signals, or filter signals. A PC-based test instrument, for example the analog discovery, or this picoscope, makes the hands-on DSP learning activity self-contained and portable. You can use the free version of MDK ARM to run example programs from the education kit or from the book. This experiment concerns the use of an adaptive filter to identify an unknown plant or signal path. Adaptive filter theory is covered in the education kit lecture slides and in the book, but we don't need to understand how the filter works. All we need to accept for now is that it will adjust itself so as to emulate the unknown signal path, minimising the variance of the error. So let's run the program. What you can hear is the error signal diminishing as adaptation takes place. We've set the adaptation rate very, very low so that we can appreciate what's happening. We can also, on the other channel, listen to the pseudo-random signal applied to the system. While the program is running, we can see the changing weights of the adaptive filter here in MDK arm. At first sight, the signal path identified is trivial. It's a cable looping headphone out back into line in. But if we halt the program and save the filter coefficients to a file readable in MATLAB, we can plot the adaptive filter's impulse and frequency responses. We can identify a latency in the signal path. And the shape of this part of the impulse response corresponds to a low pass magnitude frequency response. This is a remarkably accurate representation of the characteristics of the signal path. If we want, we can add a filter designed using MATLAB and implemented in real time by the microcontroller to the unknown signal path. Here are the results for a bandpass filter. All of this represents a step change in the accessibility, due to affordability and portability, of DSP hands-on learning activities. And this is an exciting opportunity for students to develop a deeper appreciation of fundamental DSP concepts.